What is Eleven D? Well, first and foremost, it is a static site generator, but it's so much more too. So let's quickly review some key features. At its most essential level, it can be a drop-in replacement for tools like Gulp, and can be built with good old HTML and CSS. A huge selling point for me was that there is zero boilerplate client-side JavaScript. Technically, the only requirement besides Eleventy is an index file, which can be created in any of the languages. Mine is usually Markdown that feeds into a Nunjux layout, which we'll talk about in a bit. Once you get a feel for how things work, you can begin to add your own opinions by updating the config, which is expected to be a root file called .eleventy as a JavaScript file. Here you can do things like customize your input and output directory and add other watch directories. It's also the entry point for plugins and where you'll hook in additional templating, data, and content features. Unlike other JavaScript-based static sites like Gatsby or environments like WordPress, plugins are not typically a huge dependency for 11D sites. There are 10 templating languages available. The extra languages are a nice to have and can be added as you find a need for them. My preferred stack with 11D is HTML, Nunjux, and Markdown. Here's the full list of currently available templating languages. Finally, 11D allows for flexible content modeling, which includes a default of file system directed page creation, which is easily overwritable, grouping content with collections, and sourcing content from local or external data. With those features in mind, let's kick off our first 11D site. Our first step is to init a new project. And once that's ready, we'll install 11 d which is a scoped package and is available at 11ty slash 11 spelled out. And once that install completes, we'll open our package.json and customize the available scripts. We'll add a start command that includes 11 d with the serve flag, and this will include browser sync to enable us to launch a local server and enables hot reload as we make changes to our files. At this point, we'll go ahead and add the 11 d config file to enable one customization, which is to customize our input and output directories. We'll customize our input to source and our output to public. Now we'll go ahead and create our source directory and it's time to create the first file for 11 d to serve, which will be an index HTML file. I've gone ahead and populated this with some basic content. And at this point, we can run our start command. And see that it is serving our index file. Now it's clearly missing one critical element, which is some style. So let's add our CSS. In our source directory, we will create the CSS directory and a style file. Now this naming convention is completely up to you. I'll just drop in some styles I had available. And then in our index, we need to go ahead and link to that style sheet. And we'll point it out our CSS directory in the name of our file. Now it's triggered a rebuild. However, when we view our local site, the style has not actually been applied. This is because currently CSS is not a recognized file type by 11 d So we need to add one more customization into our config. So within our config, we're going to add our CSS directory as a pass-through copy. And this means that on build, 11D will pick up the contents of the directory and add it to our output directory. We're also enabling it as a watch target, which means that as we make changes, those should also trigger a build. So when we look again, our style sheet has been successfully applied. Congrats, you've created an 11D site. And at this point, you could keep going with HTML only. But to really get the most out of 11 d and to enable flexibility and ease of scaling your content, let's add in layouts and templating and explore the content management technique of collections. I'll explain those terms as we build them. So within our source directory, we're going to create the includes directory, which is an expected directory in the 11 d file system, and add our first layout, which will be a Nunjux file called base. And within this, we'll kick off the HTML5 boilerplate and We'll need to re-add our link to our style sheet. We'll also add some HTML elements to prepare for our incoming template content. So first we'll add the title, which will be coming from our future front matter. And we'll also use the 11 d provided variable of content. This means anything outside of front matter, add that content here. We're also including the safe filter, 
which means that if that content happens to include compiled HTML, that we want it to go ahead and render as that compiled HTML. We'll also copy our title and add that in so it's used as the document title. Now, back in our index, we'll update this file to be of the type Markdown, and then go ahead and convert its contents to Markdown. Here at the top, I have my front matter, so we've added the title there, and we've also added the layout front matter key and directed that to use our new base template. So when we relook at our site, it looks the same as what we had before, but instead of using flat HTML files, we're now taking advantage of templating with the use of Markdown and Nundux. At this point, we would like to create a new content type. So we're going to add a directory for pages. And before we add its content, we're going to create an additional page specific layout. We're again going to use Nundux. And for this layout, we're going to take advantage of the concept of layout chaining. So instead of repeating our HTML5 boilerplate, this new layout is going to chain into our base layout. And you can see for this simple example, we've only added one extra element for this page, which is to add a publish date. Now back in our pages directory, we can begin to add some pages and we'll again use Markdown for this content. So we'll add a page one and go ahead and add a second page so that we can explore the concept of collections. Now notice that for both of these pages, I've only added a title. Instead of adding a layout front matter key, we're going to use the concept of a data directory file. Now this file needs to be the same name as the directory it's within. So in this case, pages, and it will be a JSON file. And within this JSON file is where we can define the layout and we'll use our new page layout. This allows us to quickly assign the layout to pages within this directory without having to actually repeat that value on the front matter. We'll also add tags so that we can turn this pages directory into a collection. And we'll use the value of pages as the name of our collection. To use our new pages collection, we'll go back into our index and we'd like to loop over those pages and output a link for each of them. I'm in a markdown file, but I'm actually able to mix templating languages and create a loop using Nunjux to access our pages collection. As a reminder, this value matches that of the tags within our data directory file. So Nunjux is being used to create the actual for loop. And within that for loop, we're switching back to Markdown to be able to output that link. So on save and rebuild, I now have a list of links to these pages. And as we visit them, we can see that it's using our new page specific layout, as well as using the base layout. Woohoo! You know the essentials of building content in Eleventy. And if your primary need was a multi-page site, then this is precisely the model you could continue building from. But what about non-static content and data? Right now, our project is off the ground, but perhaps you find Markdown and HTML maybe a little limiting, or you want to access additional content from a CMS or some dynamic data. So next on the list of features is custom data, which will give you the ability to create data and content within the directory of data as JSON or JavaScript modules. As a quick example, here's a file located in data called people, and this exports a simple array, which we can then access in any template by the file name of people. But you're not restricted to flat or simple local data. You can also perform a fetch for external data and import any needed functionality to get and format the data you want Eleventy to use. So back in our project, let's go ahead and add a data directory, and we're going to add a file called catpick. And here we're going to use Axios to fetch from a random cat picture API. And this API happens to return a full absolute URL to a random cat image. The important note here is that fetch is done at build time, not client side. So for fetching from a CMS, this is highly desirable, but for content you want to keep more fresh, you can use services like if this, then that to do a periodic request, if your site host supports webhooks. Of course, that's a static site limitation and not unique to Eleventy. So to display the fetched cat picture, we're going to go back into our home page and use markdown format to define that this is going to be an image. And this variable name of cat pick matches the file name of the data file. So on rebuild, we can check and it happened to pull up a GIF this time. Now, if I refresh the page, I'm going to continue getting that same GIF. But if I trigger a rebuild, I'm going to get a brand new cat picture. So as we saw with that data example, we used Axios for fetching. 
And another benefit of 11D is that it is built with Node. So you can use anything in the Node and JavaScript ecosystem at build time. If you're using a headless CMS, you can easily use their API to fetch content and then use an 11D feature called pagination to dynamically create pages. We're not going to cover pagination today, but that's your key search word if you need that functionality. There's also a fledgling plugin ecosystem, and plugins come in as packages that are included via the config. They range in complexity, but most provide access to shortcodes, filters, or other types of transforms that have the advantage of already being aware of how 11D works. The best way currently to discover all 11D plugins is to search by the tag 11D-plugin on NPM. Where some platforms have the concept of themes, 11D uses the term starter, and there is a growing collection to choose from. With 10 templating languages available, there are many opinions of how things should be done, so you're sure to find one to help you get off the ground. Before we move on to some brief examples, I wanted to note that despite 11D being just three years old, there is an active, passionate community Search the phrase built with 11D on Twitter, and you'll get enthusiastic folks telling you all about it, often with a blog post about their experience. The market for content about 11D is still young, which I find exciting and have personally embraced. But when you really can't find the answer, you can tag the official 11D account on Twitter, and 11D's creator, Zach Leatherman, will often answer or RT for reach to the community. He's also quick to amplify blog posts and other things made by and for 11D if you tag the account. With 11D, I can go from idea to publish in a matter of hours, with only the speed of typing in my way. It's made me feel the magic of web development again, thanks to it truly being the perfect idea playground. I want to share just a couple of my projects that push beyond maybe what you think of as simple static sites, as inspiration for what you can do with 11D and your next idea. My first bigger project with 11D was stylestage.dev, which is a modern CSS showcase styled by community contributions. The key here is that anyone can contribute a style sheet by adding their info to the data directory via a pull request. Then a combo of 11D and Netlify allows a preview build for us both to review it before it gets added to the directory. I also used 11D to create an email generator, which is set up to allow initial email styling with SAS. With the build command, the compiled template content is fed through a filter that hooks in a package that provides inline styling, which is required for the best email style compatibility. So the output in this case is the compiled email template. But during the build, 11 provides a comfortable environment where I can tuck away the fact that ultimately an email is comprised of tables for layout. My web component generator exploits the layout functionality to inject the web component scripts and styles into the required location to create the final JavaScript file. The web component's HTML template is created as a Nunjux file, and the associated scripts and styles are created in the includes as if they were layout partials. To dynamically tie it all together, each of these files shares the same file base name, and any created web component is fed into a unified component's Nunjux template that brings all the pieces together to be created ultimately as a JavaScript file ready to be used as a web component. So. Whether you're looking for a replacement for an older setup, but otherwise content with truly static, or you're interested in upgrading your playground environment and exploiting some of the other features we talked about, I encourage you to give 11D a try. For more 11D resources, check out 11D.rocks.